I built this echo circuit from the datasheet of the PT2399 echo processor IAC. This chip has a built-in analog to digital converter, 44k bits of RAM to store audio samples, and then a digital to analog converter so that the sampled audio can be played back later. And we just provide some support resistors and capacitors, including low-pass filters. Looking at the block diagram of the chip, it can be a little confusing the way it's drawn, but there's several op amps inside the chip for various purposes, and they have pins to access the feedback path of these op amps going from output back to one of the inputs, and that's where we can put more resistors and capacitors to change the characteristics of filters. The way an echo effect works, you have your input audio signal, which gets filtered, and you can hear the direct input as part of your output signal, but at the same time, the audio analog input is converted to digital, stored in RAM, and later played back through a digital to analog converter and filtered again to get rid of any digital noise, and this delayed signal is summed back with the original input, so you get a delayed copy of your original audio, which goes to your output as well. And at the same time, this delayed copy and any new audio is again sampled, delayed, played back, and summed with any current audio coming in. So you keep getting this echo along with your current new audio coming in. And the gain of this delayed audio that's being fed back should be less than one in other words, being a little quieter than when it came in, so that every time it goes through and gets resampled and delayed again, it gets quieter until eventually it fades away. But if you have a gain of one or more, so it may be even louder than it used to be, it'll just keep feeding back in an infinite loop, and that can get cluttery, but it can also have some interesting wall of sound effects. So we'll try to demo that. And this data sheet is known for not really explaining a lot of the functionality of the chip. And looking at this application circuit, this is just a big mess of components going to all these pins. And when you look at the pin description, low pass filter one and two in and out, like what does that even mean? One thing they do provide is this table of resistor values that change the delay time of the echo effect. So if we take for granted for a minute how this actually works or what all these components are here for, pin six has a variable resistor and a fixed resistor to ground, and that controls the delay time of this audio that got sampled and is going to be played back. For example, according to this table, if you have a very low resistance down toward a couple of hundred ohms on that pin six to ground, you start getting down toward a minimum of around 30 milliseconds of delay. So that's going to be really fast, like a reverberation. And if you have resistance getting up toward 30K, you can get a delay time of going toward 350 milliseconds. So that's more audible where you can say a word and you'll hear that word echoing and fading out. Only problem is the longer the delay time, the higher the distortion in the audio. So there's a smaller distortion when you have a small delay, but as you keep extending your delay time, the distortion keeps going up. So people consider this a low fidelity echo effect, but even having distortion in it can add certain characteristics. So it still has good uses, especially in certain guitar delay effect applications. And since there's not much info in the datasheet on how this works, there's a lot of analysis that's been done on this on various websites and forums. I found the ElectroSmash website to have a good breakdown that I could follow. And they start out by showing a copy of the block diagram of the chip from the datasheet, and then they redrew it to make more sense. For example, the audio input comes to an op amp based low pass filter. But looking at this block diagram on the datasheet, we see there are op amps, but like, how do you make sense of that? So here we can see we have a low pass filter op amp 
Then with this comparator and this modulator and demodulator and delay line, it's still not fully clear, but this is the analog to digital and the RAM and digital to analog portion. Then your output is low pass filtered again, and there's another available op amp. And right here, pin six is where the resistor goes to ground normally to control the delay time. So what this is doing is based on the amount of current through pin six, which is based on the resistor value we put to ground, it controls the frequency of the clock running all of this with a voltage controlled oscillator. So we can speed up or slow down the clock, which changes our delay time. Here's a close up of the voltage controlled oscillator circuit block in the chip and pin six, normally having the resistor to ground. If you have a lower resistance, I believe less than 2K, when powering up, this chip could go into a latch up condition and fail to start oscillating until you power it again with enough resistance to limit the current through this pin. But after it's been powered up, you can lower the resistance and get shorter delay times. So one way around this, if you have an RC time constant here connected to the five volt power supply, when you power on, this transistor will initially be off. So there's going to be a high impedance on pin six and it should allow the chip to power up and stabilize. And then later after this capacitor has charged up enough, it turns on this transistor and you can put a resistor to bring in a path to ground and change the delay time when it's safe to do so. There's all kinds of other things that can be done. For example, this clock from the voltage controlled oscillator controlling the delay time can also be manipulated with pin two on the chip. If you vary the voltage here, you're changing this internal 2.5 volt reference and that can modulate the delay time as well. So you can do things like this to make a chorus effect where you're introducing a very small change in voltage and a smaller change in delay time. And it sounds like there's multiple copies of the sound present or a chorus. I haven't tried that yet, but I will be doing that in the future. There's a lot more info on this page about how everything works. So again, visiting this delay time resistance on pin six with the internal clock, here's that anti latch up power on delay circuit again. So power comes on, capacitor eventually charges up and this transistor comes on and then you can vary the amount of current through this pin to control the delay time. You can use a potentiometer controlling how much this transistor is turned on and therefore controlling the amount of current on pin six to the chip. And here starting in section four is where the actual functionality of the chip starts getting explained. The audio signal comes in here and usually guitar effects will have a resistor to ground at the input to help set a ground reference and provide an impedance for the input. We then have a DC block AC coupling capacitor and then all of these other resistors and capacitors from R2 on over towards C2 work with this op amp as a low pass filter. And this op amp is part of the internals of the chip. So on the data sheet, pin 15 and 16, this jumble of parts here is that input with the DC block capacitor and the pull down resistor. And then all of these parts here going in the op amp circuit. So pin 16 and 15 here, are this low pass filter op amp. So this schematic breakdown makes a lot more sense. After the low pass filter, still internal to the chip, we have our analog to digital, our memory storage and digital to analog, and a low pass filter associated with this. Pins nine and 10 have an external capacitor. There's a built-in 4.7K resistor in the chip, but externally on pins nine and 10, we can tune the value of a capacitor. So that would be this op amp here, pins nine and 10 with a built-in 4.7K. And there's pins nine and 10 in the echo circuit with just a capacitor external and internally there's a low pass filter. And as for how the analog to digital and digital to analog works, 
and the fact that there's circuit blocks for a modulator as well as a demodulator. We're not going to go into all of that, but it's basically a delta sigma topology. So they do explain here, the analog is converted to digital, stored in the 44k bit memory, and when we are ready to send the digital audio back out as analog, we need an anti-aliasing filter as part of the analog signal reconstruction. So this uses another chip op amp with a 4.7k built in, and we can add another capacitor on pins 11 and 12. So there's a capacitor across 11 and 12, and then the output of this op amp circuit starts going through another network of resistors and capacitors coming from pin 12. So that's right here, the output of the op amp. We have this low pass filter right here. So a resistor between 10 and 15K and maybe a 3.3 nano capacitor to ground. There's a 10K and there is a 3.3 nano to ground. And then we branch off into these two resistors and a 560 Pico across pins 13 and 14. So here's that branch of two resistors and a 560 Pico on pins 13 and 14, which brings us into another internal op amp as another low pass filter. And this circuit structure here makes a lot more sense than all of this without really understanding what's happening inside the chip according to the data sheet. Now we have pin 14 and another bunch of resistors and capacitors going all over the place. Pin 14 is the output of this filter. So we have another low pass filter, maybe a 5.6K and a 10 nano to ground and a DC block capacitor 10 micro. Here's pin 14, 5.6K resistor, 10 nano to ground and a DC block. Then we have a pot to ground with the wiper providing an output. So here we can control the level of our delayed audio out. If the wiper goes toward this capacitor, we're getting our full signal strength. As we go toward ground, we're getting no signal. So that controls the feedback level coming back to some with our original signal. And that's where we can set the gain and control whether the echoed audio gradually fades out or if it actually stays strong and keeps getting looped around infinitely. So here is that pot to ground going back to where it says echo feedback. So we have to refer back to the original input circuit where it gets summed in. So that comes here, gets combined in with the original audio. So we have ongoing audio and anything that was delayed and keeps looping back and echoing. And that's basically how the chip works. I built it with these component values here, so let's try it out with vocal as well as a 555 generated sound source. I will turn it up and see how it sounds. If I go too high on the level, it will just keep beating back. I'll turn it down a bit. Now I'll start increasing delay time. So more of a slap back and get in longer. This is the maximum. If I turn up the feedback to maximum, it will start building up an infinite repeat. And, and, and that, 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 that,